that brings up an interesting point. I had a very um, amazing event with my my youngest son, who's also happens to be your youngest son as well. It's the, it's the same kid. Uh-huh. We were going for a drive the other day, and uh, we went to the little dock by our went to the docks by the river here in Austin, and we were eating an apple, sharing an apple in the car, just sort of hanging out by the dock. Mm-hmm. And this gorgeous lady in like a thong bikini was walking over, away from her car to her friends. And sort of, we were just parked and she kind of walked out of her car in nothing but a thong bikini and over to her friends. And she had like a spectacular ass. And I kind of, without even thinking about it, just watched her walk over to her friends because she was walking away from us. Mm-hmm. And I, I sort of zoned for a second, forgetting that I was there with my son. And I wasn't like gawking or saying anything or like panting. I was just like, just kind of quietly <laughs> we were sharing this apple. And she walked over to her friends. And then there was a pause. And my youngest son said, so there's that. And that was, it was such a moment of like, Oh, you wow. bonded. Oh, you, you bonded in on your manhood over a, a, a girl's tushy. We bonded over admiring a great ass, and it was a really great bonding moment. Whereas my older son and I bonded over baseball. My <laughs> my younger son and I <laughs> bond over cinema because he's a cinemaphile like I am, and a great ass. And that was that was a wonderful moment. And then we laughed. No. Uh-huh. But I'm 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 s- glad you had that. Moment I'm sort of. The door, like for a long time with the kids, I was, um, <clears throat> I was like, cool dad. Uh huh. And that, that's not the case right now. I don't know if this will change again. Will they realize how cool I am? I'm mm-hmm. hoping so. But I was in a Starbucks drive through line with them. <laughs> <laughs> and I oh. don't know what happened, but I got all thumbs on the, the app. The Starbucks app mixed with scan and pay mixed with their reload, which is just a scam anyway of their reload. Yeah, you can't just pay. <laughs> it's like, wait, well, you I, can if you use your credit card. You'll buy anyway. a $3 coffee, but reload it with $25. <laughs> it's anyway. So, and then there's the wall. So I got there and I, for some reason, and I do this, I use the app all the time, but I got all thumbs and I, I couldn't fucking remember how it all worked. And I was like to the girl in the drive thru I was like, do I scan and then reload? And then is it using the card? And then I don't remember what her answer was because for some reason, all the data that I know went out the window. Uh-huh. And it ended with like, okay, so do I have to pay? And she's like, no, it... You, and, I, and then I was like, oh, then should I use my wallet? Like on the thumbprint of my credit card, my wallet? She's like, okay, now I've confused her because she knows how to do all this stuff. <laughs> so it ended up with me doing my thumbprint over the Apple Pay of the wallet, and it made the clink. And I was so rejoiced that it was done, I went, shabam. <laughs> and she kind of looked at me. And then the story is like sliding down in his my, seat. My, like. Yeah, our oldest was sliding down. So I drove forward a little bit so we could pass out all the food in the car and not hold up the line. And story went, shabam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you slid down the ranks in that moment. Shabam. On the dad cool points. And so now as they walk through the house, if they walk by me, they'll say, Shabam. Which to them represents their dad is like a complete dork at this point. Uh-huh. But that but that I, I stuck my dismount after fumbling with my thumbs for 20 minutes in the driving line with a Shabam. So th- that's, that's my dismount. I, st- uh-huh. I stuck my landing. There is definitely like that change where you're like the coolest thing in the world or your mom and dad in one way, like last night in the car with you, with the, we went for a drive looking around the, all the Christmas lights and, you know, we kind of had our dinner and, um, cleaned up and we're like, let's go for a drive. Family drives are always like so fun, especially around the holidays because you get to drive around all the neighborhoods nearby and look at all the lights and play Christmas music. And we had the top down on the, the car and we put was, on the we put on the Beach Boys Christmas album. Yeah, it was really great. It was amazing. And mm. um, yeah, so we were out driving. And then you tell me how, what happened again. You, somehow the subject came up of uh, what was it? The story of the girl. Oh, because we went to the same dock. Yes. 
So we went to the same dock where Easton and I bonded over a great ass. And I said, oh, Easton, look, it's the dock where where we bonded over a, over a great tuchus was the word that we used. A great tuchus. We didn't use, I don't use ass. Uh, yeah, you get the point. And, and then did, what did, oh, Easton's like, yeah, you act like that's the, the first time I've ever seen a tuchus. And I was like, well, you haven't seen many of them. <laughs> the story. And you're like, in your mind, like crossing your fingers. Right. Well, I mean, I, I know that we watch movies together because we're big movie guys. And I always fast forward through any nudity and he's like, dad, ridiculous. It's like a boob. Like, just let it play. And I'm, and I'm way overkill because I was raised by a mom who was the exact opposite. Like my mom was like, my mom was a hippie that had, that has double D boobs and would never wear a shirt ever, ever into her sixties. She does seventies. She doesn't wear a shirt when she's working in her studio. She's an artist. And my friends would come over and be like, dude, Bo, your mom has great tits. So, so, so my, awkward. so I saw, I saw a lot of nudity as a boy and I kind of overcompensate by fast forwarding that for my kids. I don't really think they need to see it at this point as teenagers because they're going to see it. But my, so my youngest said, it's not like it's the first time I've ever seen a great ass or no. A, can you remember the story? Cause now I can't remember. And I don't, I don't remember wanna, exactly what I he said. Get wrong. You were like, remember you were, it, it was because you were reminding him in a way that was like very ceremonial. Cause it was that for you. It was, it was like it a was, good story and it was like this thing. And you're like, remember yeah. that girl? And we had that fun moment and she was with her took us. Yeah. And he says like, you're acting like that was the first took us I've ever seen. Right. And, <laughs> and you and I just slowly turned and looked at each other like, what? But there was the other part of it, which was... Then wh- they started talking about my tuchus. Right. Because I'm a nudist in the house. To a degree, yeah. Yeah, like I just shower and then I go get dressed and I right. leave the door open. And, and it's just hit that it, point. It hit that point now with the boys where they never... Story chimes in from the backseat going, yeah, when I was six, I didn't care. But now, like, can you shut the door? Because <laughs> now it's now like it's a, it's they different. see women... Like, before, they only saw women as mother. Right. And then girls and boy playmates are asexual right. when you're young. That's it's, right. They're, to they're a gra- interchangeable. To a greater degree, so, yeah. I yeah, know. yeah. I mean, sometimes you have little crushes or whatever. But when you're right. young, it's just kind of like... Yep. They're not in a category Asexual is a great way to grab that. it. Yeah. And then, obviously, you get older, and that changes. And so, I was like, okay, I think... And Easton, you know, obviously, story's older, so he hit the point of like, oh, God. Oh, geez. Yeah. And Easton would just come and go and didn't care. But now Easton has now, oh, God, Ugh, yeah. ew, shut the door. Yeah. So um, I think I now have to, but you know what I was thinking? Oh. It's going to benefit me because now I can actually have a um, shower in private. Uh, except true. for you, who never lets me shower in private. So. <laughs> but um, that's a different, that's a different podcast altogether. Yeah. I mean, we've touched upon it, but um <laughs> But I do. I think I get to now shut the door. I get yeah. to lock it, and I yeah, get to have they, some some self care time. They would never leave you alone, quiet. especially in the shower. Yeah. They would run in and try to talk to you. And now I think they're. But not do you gonna, do that? Well, I still am going to bother you yeah. in the shower because you're gorgeous. Because I just never and you're hot. Can have my own and time. And shower time is a great opportunity to get, to For talk me to, to have to talk to you about things that I want yeah, to talk, talk, talk to you talk. about. Talk talk. Come in and do things. Talk. Well, you can't just do things because I noticed that you do like to have. You do like to talk for 12 Yeah, but not in the first. shower. I want to have my shower time. But even when we're taking a shower for shower time that could lead to other time, you always like to talk for 12 or 13 minutes. <sighs> always. Always without fail. And I don't know well, if that's... Well, yeah, your... I'm not like... I just don't do you know. you think I am a machine? <laughs> no. Do you think I'm just a machine? Like, you get in the no. shower and I'm just like... <laughs> no. <laughs> like, what do you Why think? Do you do... Like, the story, the like chicken. Just like a blow-up doll. The, the just chicken that just goes, oh. The direction you need me to go. Like, I don't have any. Well, I think the, the 13 minutes of talking is your foreplay. Because I can't just... <laughs> I'm not a machine. I know you, men would like to view women as machines I don't, I don't, and just feed you, I don't want serve you, to be a, you, clean your house, and then just sit and be a zero and listen, and then clean up after you make the food, put the duvet on. like <laughs> The duvet. The fucking duvet. First off, it took me 25 years of our 32 years together to understand what a duvet is. And I'm still... I know, but you make me wrong for you not knowing. And, and like, me, I'm supposed to, like, educate you. 
on all the parts of and the And du- the duvet almost ended the marriage this week. Like, we almost we almost had to call a divorce attorney because of the fucking the duvet. duvet. It's the duvet. It was, you were like, well, plan for when to be able to put it on and not wait till the last second. I was like, did you, literally every day well, yesterday was back to back to back to back. Say what happened. Here, Here's what occurred. Okay, this is not that interesting. <laughs> well, you have to make it interesting. That's the point of a podcast, my love. <laughs> this will make it more interesting. Okay, good. Tell your debate. Tell your fucking debate story with with Peter. All right. The Muppet. Well, the shower gets steamy, and then I found out that having linens in the bathroom, they get mildewy from the steam of the shower. So now I can't have my linen closet. In the bathroom. And being LA natives, the humidity in LA versus the humidity in Austin is already, like, the way you have to store things here is new for us. Yeah, but it's mainly the shower. Mainly the shower. The shower doesn't, our bathroom doesn't vent enough steam. Yeah. <laughs> we even upgraded the fan. It still doesn't. Still doesn't, do so it gets too So steamy. we either have to take colder showers or have a, anyway. So I'm so. laying in bed with the new duvet on. Jenna put a new duvet on, and I'm laying in bed, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> and I'm like, the fuck smells so sour and I I me and Easton are watching a movie and I smell Easton and he's like do I smell I'm like no you smell delicious like no and I'm like it's the fucking duvet and I bring the duvet up to my face and it's like this horrible mildewy sour smell and and I'd already put it through a dryer cycle to try and kill that and it didn't work so then at 11 p.m., I had to take the duvet off. I was like, Jenna, the fucking duvet smells like... Yeah, but then you're like, oh, the comforter's too silky. It's too slippery. And I'm like, well, I have to wash the duvet and dry it. It's 11 Do... o'clock at night, and I'm freaking Do... tired. Does anyone else like, have... Can't... Wait, wait. Does it's anyone slippery. else have the thing where if the if a bedding material is too soft or slippery, too silky... It makes a weird sensation on the skin. I need like a cottony kind of sensation for my skin. Yeah, and but then when I put the linen one on, you're like, where's that other one? This one is nuh-uh, too... Nuh-uh, snuh-uh. I like the linen-y I one. I'm too cold in the linen one. Where's the other one that's thicker? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jenna gave me a toxic duvet and told me basically just shut up and I'm just trying it. to kill you. Yes, I know Just that. secretly trying to slowly I kill know. you with mildew. I know. And, and a duvet. And it almost worked because I was gagging. <laughs> and then I had to make you change a duvet well into the night. And you were like... <laughs> and then I sanitized, washed it. And sanitized, dried it. And then I said, can you guys please check this? And then you're like, spent so long, like... <laughs> And then he's to Easton, do you smell? <laughs> and he's like, wait, 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 let me check again. And he's holding his nose in there so long, trying to see if he has the faintest. I'm like, if it's taking you this long to I see could, if you can smell it, I think we're okay. Deep in the recesses of sour yeah, smell. that's not going to get you. That, that, it, we're fine. It, but when you're sleeping and you're kind of there, I didn't want anything to curl up on me where it was like oh a slightly God. sour duvet. Okay, so yeah, what we're saying is that the marriage isn't working. <laughs> And so we're announcing today on our podcast that I am still married to my wife. You know, the thing is, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So here's the thing. This is the name of our dog's autobiography, by the way. He's going <laughs> to... Peter. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Are you trying to look to you? We did that. Okay. You. This morning was the first time you actually admitted to eccentricities. And I don't want to, like, in life be like call you out for like some full you're all twisted and look at how rigid you are right now no i'm listening okay you're like this i'm listening like, okay here's getting ready for no the- i'm i'm listening and then i was also wondering if every time we were laughing was shaking the camera the way we're doing it these days because we're on the bed yeah and i was like oh shit or was like wiggling the camera by laughing and then the dog jumped off the bed so which is part of my eccentricity yes, it is. in itself which i'm slightly rain man i have like a a hint of rain man in me <laughs> here's you don't know what to do because here's the problem you're married to me <laughs> and and you can't be all like well your honor oh, i have to get the dog okay the bed's gonna jiggle because peter's also a little extra i want to hear about this i i who who wants to constantly be like i don't know i feel like i've over the years it's actually the entire nature of this podcast is kind of centered around this fact. 
No. There are so many things that are your eccentricities, too. I don't have eccentricities. Oh, sure you don't, sweetheart. Sure you don't. <laughs> I gotcha. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> but the, like... Okay, you call me... <laughs> A few went through my head. Carry on. <laughs> I almost up chucked. Okay, carry I'm on. <laughs> almost certain they're all the ill effects of living with you for 32 years. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm so curious. If Tell you me when they started. That would be the thing. <laughs> well, I have met you at, you were 19 and living with mom and dad. Right. And I wasn't all weird. And, and you went from your house to, a you. Part, to me. So where would there be this period of time where you'd get to know your eccentricities in life? You were a kid. But we weren't talking about I, that. I don't know. I'm silent right now. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so you call me out all the time on how I talk to you sometimes has a default setting, a silent suffix to the sentence of, you idiot. Yeah, you put a silent you idiot, an unsaid you idiot at the end of talking to me, but it, it'll last for several hours, as opposed to a, an instance where I'm But you don't think idiot. you're having like batches of idiocy? No, I've proven to you many times when we're driving and you say something, I'm like, and I'll jokingly say, you idiot, like, because if that's what you're saying to me. And I hadn't done anything that was idiot- idiotic. But sometimes you call me out and I didn't. I was like, no, not at all, actually. But your tone says it. It's like you put a default tone. The, maybe, okay. the, maybe we're not the only ones. There's, I have a feeling that there's wives across the world. Uh, yeah. Annoyed by their, their husbands. Yeah. So. I don't think we're special in that way. No, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I think also like. <laughs> How we just let our automaticities ride. Yes. And I think Relationships do that. Yeah, you're just like... And you're not... You're just sort of... Like you're not sort of being aware of what you're putting into... Not you, me too. Yeah, yeah. Where you stop becoming like aware of what you're putting into the environment. Yes, you know? I agree. And sort of not thinking before you speak or it's some sort of introverted situation. But I just think that there's like... In relationships, when you've been together forever, you kind of have to reassess because you start, you yeah. grow, right? Yeah. Like, I've grown and evolved, and you've grown and evolved, and we've had all these shared experiences, but I think that, like, because it goes into a take-for-granted situation. Yes. Instead of a keeping it fresh and being, you and I change for each other all the time. We're always working on ourselves. Yes. But I think that there's, like, something going, you know, the beauty of living. Yeah. You know, the beauty of communicating and how you communicate things. Yeah. And sort of like increasing the beauty yeah. of how we conduct ourselves in the household. How we, you know, just sort of the day-to-day making it beautiful. Yes. I think that's what it is. It's just like actually is there, instead of the comfort, which is great, and we don't even have to think about that because we know we'll always have it, but finding the beauty of Ugh. elocution with it's each so other. It's so easily easy, more easier said than done. When but the, it's also the p- pandemic to me. Yes. Just made me go like, yeah. like you know, I got so comfy at the at home thing, and, and it was just so shitty for a couple of years. Yeah, it, was like, it kind of bums you out. Yeah. You just kind of get a little raw and base. You know True. what I mean? And you just are like, well, yeah. bleh, we're surviving. And, yeah, you know. I agree. But it's with you. like, you know what? <clears throat> like, how about like, I don't know. I've just become more interested lately in like how to make living beautiful. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And not being like, I don't want to be so grumpy with you. That's not beautiful. Right. You know, or, um, if I get stressed out, like just being attentive, I'm much better now at predicting things. Yes. I I see that. Yeah. I see that. But like just sort of actively working towards how to take something, a condition or a situation or like how we communicate and making it more beautiful or yes. lovely just because that, to me, is therapeutic. Yes. Well, I think you're really good at that. And I also think you've gotten really good at predicting things. And so you keep the peace really well. Yeah. You're very good at seeing something that's going to set me off or something. And you, I've noticed that lately, first off, I don't get set off very much. But I noticed you've gotten very good about being, when you think something's setting me off, you don't try to logic me out of it or talk me out of it you just like oh yeah okay yeah 
<laughs> so I get all ramped up and you're like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, no problem. And then you just kind of like, and I'm like, oh, well, I guess there's, there's nothing for me to react to and I'll just move off and do something different. And I'm like, that was very good. I've noticed that. Yeah, I started. You've gotten very good at that. I started doing more like, is it important, Jenna? Like, is this the hill you want to die on? Totally. Relationships. And we're at 31 to 32 years now. It's a navigation of every, at any is, given is time, this, is this the hill I want to die on? Is this the hill I want to die on? Yeah. Oh my God, that would be the name of our marriage book, <laughs> Kicking and Screaming. Is this the hill you want to <laughs> die on? Because there's just so many times where I'm like, no, nah, I'm not dying on this hill. Yeah. You're right, sweetheart. And I'm not hit. I'm like, she's out of her fucking mind. But I'm like, yeah. not the hill I want to die on. I'm calling the troops back. <laughs> Full surrender. We are outflanked. This is not the hill I want to die on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Moving forward. Yes. I have a curiosity. Okay. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to open that can of worms. Okay. But I can give you the headline. Sure. Let's hear it as we wrap this up. I wanted to know... I was like, you know, because I know you have those moments of like, she's bad shit, but this isn't the hill I want to die on. Now, I know in those moments, I don't think I'm bad shit. Right. And I really admire your perspective on things yes. in life. Yes, yes. And I'm like, he thinks I'm bad shit. And like, I don't see it. Like, that'd okay. be a blind spot. Okay. I don't think it's bad shit. I think you're just... It, you're well, just, you just said that. Oh, she's th- bad shit. Okay, on that yeah. subject in or that, in that mo- moment. I use that word as a joke. It, it's yeah. really, I think she's not in the right. Or she's yeah. she's not right about this. But carry on. What were you saying? But I was like going, I, you know, it's never a smart idea to just like open up each other to each other's criticisms because criticism really comes from something else anyway. So, but like, I was like, do I open the can of worms of like, you know what? I'd like to clean up all these areas where you have to work, do that thing. Like you have to do the like, oh, is this the hill I want to die on? No, oh. she's in the wrong. So, Oh no, you don't. Right. See. No, I've done a few tests a couple times where I open up the can a little bit <laughs> and I still remember those moments and uh. where I was when it happened. Mm. Oh, I, there's like a couple of subjects where I'm like, uh, uh-uh. and what I find it is, is it's related to areas that are very personal for each of us that we are tapped into personal areas and it's just best to let the other person have the, have the, the conch. And that's that. But is They're, it, is it because it's none of our business? No. Oh. Cause it's obviously all of our lives are intertwined. It's just personal areas Yeah. that it's yeah. like, it's like, there's just a couple of them that I probably know with myself that you just go, uh, uh-uh, not going there. He is not going to, there was, I know that there was one for years that was how much I hated memorizing lines for auditions. And you tried to help me so many times. And every time you tried to help me, I'd blow up at you. It was such the, you were not the source of anything. Yeah. And there was a period of time where you're like, I'm not going to try to like work this out with him. Yeah. Like I, cause it was not the hill you wanted done. Cause I was wackadoodle on the subject. Uh-huh. I could not think clearly about how many lines like an actor had to memorize for just a fucking audition. And I couldn't settle it out for myself. Right. And it took me too long and I would go nuts. And I get and I and you were just you tried to help me. And every time you tried to help me, I'd be blowing up. Yeah. It was a personal area. So a happy marriage is staying staying honest with each other, not yeah. having secrets, honoring each other's yes. needs and, and values yes. and respect. But definitely making hard choices on is this the hill I want to die on or not. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. And I don't and I don't want to die there I, I don't want to die in any hills, so I just I'm having a very fun time. The good, here's the good news. Okay. You are very happy. Let me, let me rephrase that. You are very easy to keep happy. Meaning if things are bright and fun and cheerful and playful, you are, you are like a singing pie, delicious, sweet, warm, and fuzzy and amazing. So it's very easy to keep you happy. It's not a delicate, it's not so, you're not very delicate. Like you just, there's just certain things that I have to just watch that are very easy to do. Mm-hmm. I'm a little more, you have to do a little bit more of a dance around to keep me happy, but it's less and less. I just think less. you, I just like you get a little more, yeah, you're just a little more sensitive about things. Yeah. I think I'm more hearty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about certain things. But then there's certain things I'm just not hearty on because I just sure. fucking hate it. That's They're right. my buttons. Yes, that's right. We yeah. each have our buttons yeah, 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 and that's yeah. not the hill either of us want to die on. Yeah. Don't so. die on each other's buttons. It's not worth it. Because a button is just a button and it was probably there long before you arrived. Well said. 
Yeah, don't die on the so buttons. So if, if you, you're you late to that button party, you're not going to be the one to undo it, so don't die on the button hill. You just solved right? 99% of the marriage problems. Don't yeah. die on the button hill. If it's a button for the other person, if in the, if the significant other, is it's the area of a button, something that just triggers them, don't die on that hill. You're not going to logic them out of it. You're not going to convince them out of it. You're not going to be scientific in your thinking, or it's just that's the hill you don't want to die on. You got it. You yeah. got it, sweetheart. Okay. Over to you. Thank you.